My name is Peter, My name is Peter Stuckrad from Shoy Dental Company, and I'd like to guide you through this video training on the fabrication of an occlusal splint using DuraSoft material. This training is aimed at all those who want to fabricate their splints in their own laboratory. We are using products of the material family DuraSoft. This is a high-quality thermoforming material that is fabricated in a specific extrusion process. One side, the hard one, is made of PETG, and the other side, the soft side, is made of thermoplastic polyurethane. DuraSoft seal is specifically intended for lamination with DuraSoft PD, as it avoids any discoloration of splints made of DuraSoft. DuraSoft seal provides a thin but stable inner lining of these splints, which is resistant against discolorations. Thanks to the low thickness of the DuraSoft seal foil, the splints maintain their pleasant and soft feel. This guide applies to the fabrication of occlusal splints with or without adjustments. The fabrication procedure is similar for both kinds of splints. The choice of the right thickness depends on the individual indication. I'll mention any differences in the fabrication when I get to the corresponding step in the video. See it for yourself. At the end of the video, you'll be able to prepare splints made of DuraSoft on your own. Before we begin, I would like to briefly refer to the technical equipment and materials that are required for fabrication. Our pressure molding device is BioStar or MiniStar S. The finishing set. A pellet cover. Materials of the DuraSoft product family. A parallelometer. Blue blocker or sill kit. Isofilan foil, an HM carbide cutter for rough cutting the splint, a cutting burr for finer finishing, in particular the interdental spaces, the polyfix disc for grinding and pre-polishing the sandwich material, SD foil scissors A and B. For the splint adjustment, we recommend using Dura Splint Resin, Resimix mixing cups, orthodontic insulating agent, a pressure pot, and finally our SD polishing pastes A and B. A few words on the basic model preparation. The models must be trimmed flat. The use of a parallelometer can be very helpful. It is used to determine the correct splint extension and to control the insertion direction. If you want to adjust your splint using DuraSplint, don't forget to mount the models into an articulator using a bite registration. For easier repositioning, you can grind a marking, for example, across centrally under the models using a burr. Then apply a thin layer of Vaseline to the bottom for insulation. Now you can mount the upper and lower jaws in the articulator using the recommended bite registration. Lock out gaps or strong undercuts with blue blocker or silk kit. A tip, make sure not to use thermal waxes due to the high working temperatures. Place the model on the model platform. Fix an isofolan foil and enter the heating time. The recommended heating time can be found on the packaging label. Heating times differ depending on the type of infrared heater of your machine. Once the heating time is entered, swivel the heater directly above the fixed foil. Visual and audible signals indicate the end of the heating process. Now swivel the heater back and close the pressure chamber by flipping it 180 degrees to the right. 
Once the pressure chamber is locked, the cooling phase is initiated. Visual and audible signals indicate the end of the cooling process. Press the button air to evacuate the pressure chamber. Now open the locking shaft and flip the locking ring over to the left. You can now open the pressure chamber and remove the model. Cut off the isofoulant foil below the desired splint extension directly along the model rim. Cut the isofoulant foil in the area of the interdental spaces with a scalpel and then embed the model with the base into the pellets. Enter the heating time indicated on the packaging label. Fix the Durasoft seal material. Start the heating process. Once heating is completed, you can flip the Durasoft seal over the model and close the pressure chamber. Reduce the Durasoft seal foil taking into account the desired splint extension using SD foil scissors. Perforate the area below the interdental papillae with a scalpel. Very important when working with this kind of material, always make sure not to make any incisions to the splint extension. This might impair the protective effect of the Durasoft seal foil. Here once again we recommend using the pellet cover to minimize the loss of pellets. In the next step, the Durasoft PD material is heated and then thermoformed over the Durasoft seal foil. Thanks to pressure, and heat, a non-detachable connection between these two materials is achieved during this process. If you intend to fabricate an occlusal splint with adjustment, you can build up the thermoformed splint with Durasplint. Durasplint is a cold cure resin that combines very well with the thermoformed material. It is manufactured on the basis of methyl methacrylate and cadmium free. It is characterized by simple mixing, controlled modeling, excellent stability, long working time, and good polishing quantities. In the next step, the thermoformed Durasoft PD splint is reduced below the desired extension. One more note, to avoid thermal stresses, it is important that the splint is lifted from the model only after the splint adjustment is completed. Don't forget to insulate the antagonist using orthodontic insulating agent. Mix the Durasplint components according to the prescribed mixing ratio in a Resimix cup and apply the resin to your Durasoft splint. The mixing ratio is one part of monomer and two and a half parts of polymer. In concrete terms, this means for a partial adjustment, you need four milliliters of monomer and 10 milliliters of polymer. Wet the surface with Durasplint monomer. It is important that the mixed Durasplint is applied while the monomer is still damp. Now, place the splint in a pressure pot for curing. Please adhere to the fixed polymerization time, the pressure and the water temperature.
In case of larger adjustments for frontal and canine guidances, a silicone matrix might be helpful. Once polymerization is completed, the Dura splint adjustment is finished, for example, with the LC burrs, and then it is conventionally polished. To minimize the residual monomer, we recommend placing it in water for several hours. For coarse cutting out the splint, you can use the HM carbide cutter or the cutting burr. The polyfix disc is recommended for finer finishing, especially for the interdental spaces, and later as well for finishing the rims and for initial polishing. The Dymo polishing wheels are best suited for smoothing the material transitions and finishing the soft parts of the splint. Use the wheels at low speed. For final polishing, please use a pumice stone and the SD polishing pastes A and B. The products of our Citron line are the best choice for cleaning the occlusal splints as they won't impair the resin. So we've already reached the end of our training. I hope you like this video. You can find further training videos and news on our Facebook site or on our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our Facebook page or to visit our website to be always up to date on any new contents. Thank you very much. Visit us again. Your Peter Stuttgart.